This is Sonar Phone by Vexilar. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a marine sonar, fish finder, depth sounder for your smartphone. Um, not a new product by any means. It's been on the market seven or eight years now. The thing is though, when I got looking more about this to add it to the big boat, YouTube doesn't have a whole lot about this thing, believe it or not. Uh, there's a couple of videos from some guys, you know, fishing seven, eight years ago, showing it on a little iPhone 4, iPhone 5, tiny, tiny screens. Uh, and there's the promotional video from Vexilar itself when they announced the release. That's about it. And a lot of things change in six, seven years, especially when it comes to marine electronics. Now, if you get yourself a boat, you find some boats have got all kinds of dash space to put new electronics. Some boats don't have any. Uh, and you end up having to mount stuff on top of the dash because there's no room to put stuff in. And personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I like flush mount stuff. So that's why with our boat, because there was no room to mount anything, I went with a Samsung tablet running avionics. It's like 35 bucks a year, gives me all the charts for North America, so Canada, the US, Alaska, Bahamas, the whole world is on there, but you ju I just buy the uh, North American subscription because, well, let's be honest, I don't see myself taking our 30-footer across uh, the Atlantic anytime soon. What do these two have in common? Sonar phone will talk to Navionics. And what that will give you is it will give you a split screen with the bottom contour. Uh, it will give you water temperature. All kinds of interesting stuff. That's why I wanted it on the big boat because the big boat's got a basic depth sound or nothing special, was in their factory stock in 05. The biggest one I miss is, is I like the idea of the water temperature. So, you know, you want to jump off the boat, go swimming. Well, before you find out the water is 64 degrees, you can look at it and check it. The big boat doesn't come with that factory stock in 05. Uh, and I didn't see myself dropping three and $4,000, put like a Garmin unit or something like that on that has that option and have to mount it on top of the dash because there's no room to flush mount it. Now, why are we standing in the garage in front of the high field? Well, because the boating season snuck up on me real quick this year, and I didn't get a chance to install this on the big boat. And it was sitting around in the box in the garage, and I thought, well, I can't let it sit there all, all summer long. So let's try it out in the high field. On the newer high fields, they actually put a mount down here for the transducers. Uh, as you can see, I don't have one. Must just be the make and model in the year. So what I've done, uh, where the motor mount is, because Vexilar just says, drill through your hull, throw a little sickle flex on it, seal it up, and mount the transducer. Not what I want to do. I don't want to be drilling holes in, in my hull underneath the water line. So what we got is the motor mount. It's just a couple chunks of uh, hollow channel. I had a piece of high density plastic laying around. I cut it, wedged it up in there, threw a couple screws in to hold it in place. Yes, I know they're not stainless screws, but it doesn't stay in the water all the time, so I'm not worried about it. And then I mounted the transducer to it. Now, the transducer is supposed to be slightly below the hull. Uh, that might be a little too low. I may have to raise that up. We'll find out. A little plastic mount. It is rated for 75 miles an hour. Now, this 20s horse is only going to push us about 22 miles an hour, so I don't think I have to worry about it ripping off. You can loosen it, swing it up out of the way. Um, the high field does have the rubber strip across the hull for running it up on shore. We don't run it up on shore, so I'm really not too worried about breaking it off or anything like that or damaging it. Now, cable management, I gotta cut that tie wrap off. I just ran the wire up through through one of the extra mounting, unused mounting supports on the engine. And down our mount down there. Now, of course, it is fully open cockpit in the high field, so there's really not a whole lot of places to hide wires. I was able to tuck it up, up in between the hull and the uh, the tube where they glue together, keep that under control there. Run it up underneath. Excess wires bundled up, attached to the bottom side of the seat, and then the unit is right there, screwed to the bottom side of the seat. It is uh, IPX75 rated, so it is submersible but up out of the uh, elements is still the best. Got to figure out how to, some way to clean this up. Maybe I'll tuck this up in here a little bit. Uh, power cable comes back, same route. Oops, where's my power cable? There it is. Power cable comes up, 
just a couple quick butt splices for now, or uh, quick connects. I didn't want to mangle the cable too much because I'm hoping at some point in time this will get reinstalled in the big boat. And then uh, up to the uh, flat wire connection to the outboard. It is a 12 volt 6 amp off the outboard. I'm not sure how clean of a 12 volts that is. I'm going to pull it out in the driveway, put the muffs on it, fire it up and put my uh, meter on it here before I go introducing power through this and make sure this connection looks like it's... Uh, I'm not going to guarantee this is all factory the way it's all black taped up. So I do want to guarantee that uh, you know positive is on the side it's supposed to be and negative is on the side it's supposed to be and so I don't uh, you know reverse polarity on my $300 transducer and burn it up. So we take our device, we go to settings, into our connections, Wi-Fi, and we wait for it to search. There we go, sonar phone E44, that's our unit. We're connecting, check the quality of your internet connection, connect without internet, yes, because we have to keep our Wi-Fi, because there is no internet through the sonar phone Wi-Fi. Okay, we'll back out of that. We pull up Navionics. Okay, so there's our Navionics, and boom, didn't have to do anything else. There's the feedback from the sonar phone coming. Ambient air temperature, 25 degrees. It's showing 7.3 feet, most likely because it's just banging off the concrete floor here in the garage. But it looks to be uh, feeding data just nicely. Now we go over, we can test this. We can, I can go put my finger on the uh, temperature sensor on the back of the probe. And there we go, 26 degrees, 27 degrees. So it's my uh, body temperature is warming the water temperature probe, so we know that's feeding back data correctly. I can bang on the transducer a little bit, and you can see the uh, the graph going a little crazy there. That's uh, the change that's detecting in my, with my hand and the uh, the distance change. Now, of course, this is meant to be in the water, so that's why we're just getting some crazy numbers like this. But so let's uh, take the high field out and give it a try. Welcome to the Trans Severn Waterway. We are. I am out for a little cruise in the high field today. That 20 horse Honda four stroke back there just purring away nicely at idle, pushing us along at five and a half kilometers an hour. It's pretty good. This is only a 10 kilometer zone, and the high field with one person in it, it makes a heck of a wake at anything more than about eight or 10 kilometers an hour. So uh, I had it up to 36, I think, actually by myself. That's uh, zipping right along for one person. I need to adjust the trim a little bit on the motor, though it's sitting two nose high when I'm by myself. Um, anyways, got the uh, sonar phone working, paired with my uh, Navionics app on the tablet. I'll flip it up on uh, split screen right here so you can see it. Uh, the bottom contour, I'm, I'm not a fisherman. It's in fish finder mode. I'll have to talk to a couple of my fishing buddies. There's a gain option I can adjust. I'm not 100% sure what that does. Just going to pause the video here quick. Um, you can see that noise across top of the screen while I did a little research, a little reading, talked to some friends with some fish finders. And here's the answer everybody kind of comes up with. As you can see the transducer, that's the water line kind of where the boat sits normally. The transducer is only, you know, four to five inches below the water line. Uh, according to the manual and everything else you read, they recommend between eight to ten inches. So probably what's happening to give that extra noise is the sonar is actually kind of bouncing up to the surface and creating that noise level right at the surface. So it'd be interesting to see what would happen when we're a foot or two below the water on, like, larger boats. But in case you're curious, Thanks for watching so far. Back to the video. Uh, what I'm more interested in is the water temperature at 23.4 degrees or so. That's beautiful to swim in. Um, mind you, with the big beaver lodge back there, you might have buddies in here swimming with you. It's a, a little marshy over there next to me as well. So I have a phobia of swimming with water I can't see the, like my toes in. You know, a lot of people have that kind of phobia, but oh well. Uh, anyway, sonar phone. $300 add-on to Navionics. It gives you a fish finder. Uh, has the option you can throw it on your phone like I was showing earlier. Yeah, it's it's great. I'm very, very happy. We can minimize this down. 
just have the depth down there, seven feet. Um, and actually what you can see in the chart, what it's doing is it's actually recording the sonar that I'm reading. Sorry, I had you were looking up my nose there a minute. Um, and it's recreating new data as we go. So that's kind of neat. Now, Navionics is part of uh, the Garmin network with the, uh, I can't remember what the, the captain's, captain's club or captain's, not captain's log. Um, Cap, no, Captain Circle, that's our cruise line. I don't know. It, it's a captain's com, uh, community group on uh, Navionics. And what it'll actually do, it'll take this data, upload it, and it'll update this sonar data to the charts for this area to give a more accurate reading. Because, let's face it, um, the Canadian Hydrographic Society, they probably haven't been here in 20 plus years, maybe, maybe even longer, to update uh, the depths and everything. Um, the navigable waterway, I'm sure they know what the depth is, depth is but you know, this way I'm putting in new data. Now it's interesting, it's changing the shoreline a little bit. Um, I guess I'm not that close to the shoreline. I'm kind of almost in the middle of the channel here, but yeah. So uh, I hope you liked the view, the video on uh, Sonar Phone. If you did, give the, uh, give the video a thumbs up, a like. Uh, please subscribe. Um, I'm not out to make a million dollars off this and become some sort of YouTube celebrity, but I'm getting pretty close to that monetization stage, and I think it'd be kind of neat to get that 16 or 17 cent from uh, Google. So, thanks for watching. You want to see some more videos of, on the water of the, you know, beautiful Trans-Severn Waterway? Give me a shout. Subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.